right, hello everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on FindingMiddleEarth.com uh, or my social media, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're joining from. Thank you. Um, today I'm going to quickly run through um, a edit on a photo. I'm gonna post process uh, one of the photos I took from Disney World. Uh, I went to Disney World back in December of 2014, which is now about, th I don't know, two months ago or so. Um, so I'm going to run through a quick process of how I um, kind of complete this photo super duper fast. I'm not going to hang on every single detail. Um, but if you do have any questions as to what I'm doing or any kind of technique or methods, please leave it in the comments and I will absolutely try to answer those as fast as I possibly can. Um, You'll have to excuse me, I'm a little tired tonight. I've been editing photos for um, about the past three hours and 50 minutes. Um, I'm just, I'm at that point, it's a good thing, I guess. I'm at that point where I'm so busy uh, with other things and photography um, to where I have just have this collection in Lightroom of unpublished photos just building to this overwhelming point. Um, and so that includes about 800 um, Disney photos that I have not even touched yet. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and dig into that Disney photo and I'll meet you uh, in a second. I'm going to go ahead and flip this around to the computer screen and we'll get started in Lightroom. All right, let's jump right into Lightroom here. Uh, okay, so as you can see, I took a ton of uh, photos when I was in Disney World. Uh, my wife and I went as a uh, Christmas trip for our wedding anniversary, and uh, it was, man, uh, because it was Christmas, it was just super cool. Lots of cool stuff there, decorations, lights, everything. So uh, here we go. So the um, photo I'm going to be working on today are these three right here, and uh, the first one um, in the series, I'm going to do an HDR photo here. The first one is this one here, and those of you who know Disney, uh, probably know this well. This is Gaston's Tavern, the new little area they built in Magic Kingdom. Um, so, uh, good, everything is nice and sharp. Um, yeah, I like that, everything. But yeah, you can see the um, Christmas wreath over here and, um, you know, the Christmas feel to it. And they have Christmas lights and stuff over here uh, behind Gaston's uh, area there. Um, so, Let's go ahead and select these three, and I'm gonna go to the develop module by hitting D on my keyboard. And I'm, I'm already on auto sync, which is good, which means uh, everything that I do here really quickly is going to affect all three photos down here. So I'm gonna, I'm, I always kind of do um, somewhat of a very quick um, process on the raw photos before I throw them into Photomatix to merge into an HDR. I don't do anything crazy. Uh, just do some some kind of uh, house cleaning is what I call it, just some, some basic touch-ups. So uh, profile corrections, remove the CA. Uh, I like to add a little bit of noise reduction, maybe around 15 since it's a night shot. Um, and maybe the highlights kill them around 15, maybe add a little bit of contrast. Uh, too much. Uh, there and then I think everything is kind of leaning towards a very uh, yellow tint as far as the foreground goes. Uh, so just for the heck of it, I'm gonna just kind of uh, bias the white balance a little towards the blues. Okay, okay, cool. So then I'm going to do my little keyboard shortcut to export the photos as an idea, which means it's going to throw them into three non-compressed TIFF files for me to then go and open um, in Adobe Bridge, and from there I can throw them into um, Photomatix to process them into an HDR. So you can see up here, um, they're exporting right now, and um, it's taking a minute because it's exporting three raw files and compress or converting them into TIFFs. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Bridge, Go to processing directory and do, 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 right there. There's my three. Go ahead and drop them into Photomatix. Yes, I want to merge. Yes, please. Uh, take it on a tripod. Yes, it was. Uh, no ghosting. Uh, yeah, we'll do some more noise reduction and chromatic aberration. Yes, align. <clears throat> and if you don't know what Photomatix is, it is um, one of the best. Uh, pieces of software out there for merging um, 
your photos into an HDR. And I would never recommend this as the only step. Um, however, you could do this as an only step if you wanted to. Uh, it would probably be fine for most people. Um, but I'm going to show you how to get the most you possibly can out of this image. So, uh, Photomatix basically has all these crazy wild presets over here, and some of them can look decent. And, you know, you can always start out um, with one of these and then kind of go over here and tweak it, uh, you know, what you don't like. However, I always kind of prefer, uh, this kind of takes the fun and creativity out of it. It just throws all these crazy things in there. And so I always like to just start with default. Um, and kind of create my own from scratch. And so uh, Photomatix has already merged all three photos into one. So now we can see everything lit very well, the foreground all the way through to the sky. It's lit very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the strength to 100. Um, color saturation, I'm gonna leave that for later. Tone compression, I'm gonna kind of go back and forth and see what it does here. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, like um, something like that. Okay, let's go back and forth. And by the way, the reason I'm just kind of sliding far left, far right, uh, is because you know it, each slider always affects each photo very differently. Um, you never can tell what it's going to do to each specific photo. You kind of know the basic idea of what it's going to do, but not you know to every single photo because every single single photo has different lighting and. Um, so on and so forth, different conditions. So like that's okay. Definitely gonna smooth some highlights there. White points, uh, about there. Uh, add some blacks. I think it's very important for photos to have uh, a black point um, to be just decided. And you, I'll show you how to do this a little better in Lightroom, but I always like to add a little bit of blacks because it. a lot of these sliders up here, a lot of times can take away from the contrast. And so bringing the blacks can kind of tie everything back together, add a little more contrast in there. Uh, gamma, not gonna do too much there. Temperature ended up being decent, however, I'm still gonna go a little bit more towards the blue side to cool some of these golden yellows off just a tad. Now, I don't wanna take all the, the golden yellows off, because remember, as we're kind of flying through this image, um, you know, the whole purpose of why I wanted to capture this is because it has that very warm small town feel especially with the Christmas I just you know I want viewers to look at this photo and really want to be on the other end of those doors and kind of imagine what's going on inside so you know I don't adding too much blue for example so like this it just kind of it you know it makes everything a little colder and not not so friendly and so we want it to be a little warmer and you know a little a little more happy so good there micro smoothing uh, you want to be careful with this one because micro smoothing can end up really bringing it, it. It basically brings out detail, which can be good and bad because sometimes in the night sky, like up here, can really accentuate the noise, which we don't want. So I'm gonna try to find a happy medium. I normally leave that one on around two or two point five. Uh, smooth the shadows. That's cool, and then apply. So it'll kind of throw everything together into uh, one photo here. And as you can see on the final render, uh, the noise is not near as bad as it was uh, showing on the pre-processed version. So I always like to add a little bit of medium sharpening to after I throw it out of the editing module in there. And then I can just do a quick and final check for sharpening now that it's been processed with all three merged together. And yeah, that is just beautifully sharp all the way through. Um, so there's a little bit of noise up there. We can get rid of that, no problem. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm digging that. Uh, I like it. Okay, cool. So, uh, next step, let's go ahead and save that in my processing directory. Doo -doo -doo. Let's go to the Mothership Photo Vault uh, Processing. And good. Okay, so now let's go back over to Processing. There's There it is, the one we just did in Photomatix. And there are the three TIFF files that I exported out of Lightroom. So now we're going to open all four, go to Tools, uh, Photoshop, and load into Photoshop Layers, into Photoshop CC. All right. It's going to load. And my computer normally processes these pretty fast. I just uh, upgraded my desktop computer to the new iMac 5K, which I'm extremely happy with. So this thing's just a monster. Uh, so let's make this screen a little bigger here. Okay, 
Um, so here we are. We have all the photos on top of each other, and I like to kind of you know peek under each one, under each layer, and kind of see what I like about each one, and, and merge them all together, and kind of Frankenstein my way into a really nice looking final image. So first thing I see that I don't like is uh, the sky is too bright and um, clouds are kind of gray. I wish they had a little more white in them instead of gray and some noise there. So let's, and uh, again, this is, this is my first time editing uh, this specific set of three photos. So, you know, if I'm kind of being slow, it's because I, I don't really quite know what I want to do yet. So I'm going to move the brightest one up. And see how the uh, so the one in photomatics here has this kind of you know gross looking sky uh, kind of hanging out towards the right corner. But if you go here, the um, the raw photo actually has a really nice looking sky, even though this foreground is kind of you know blown out and really too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top layer here. I'm going to create a layer mask, and I am going to start painting. Um, in some of that layer below it. So let's go to uh, maybe 30% and see what happens. And let's just start painting in some of that. Yeah, there we go. Some of that natural kind of darker blue sky there. Uh, smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. All right. Uh, Okay, let's do something like that. And, and, and again, this is, this is just one step. We're going to do a lot more. Um, and see how that kind of uh, made the clouds a little more white as well and not so uh, you know charcoal gray-ish. So, yeah, I like it. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shift select both of those. Hit Command E to merge those together into one layer now. And now let's work with the other two. So I can see uh, on this one here there's a couple of places that are kind of blown out on the highlights so which is okay you know in some I mean in some cases it's fine um, so here right here on his chest uh, all around this area is kind of gross um, just because it's really bright just right there and the blue areas are okay because that's just reflection from the water and then maybe this area right here is a little much um, and other than that that's pretty much the only thing that's like crazy blown out you know some of these lights could be a little darker, but I, I like the feeling, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. So then what I'm going to do is find a, a darker one. So let's see, something like that. And you can see here, by the way, I just noticed this, as I'm toggling these uh, layers on and off, they're not lined up. You can see there's actually a little bit of movement. So what we need to do right now, before I do any more edits, is to shift select these and go to uh, Edit and Auto Align Layers. That way it aligns everything for me, even if it has to crop it a little bit, and matches all three layers to be the exact same. So you can see how it cropped just a little bit off the top and the side, but now we're we're good to go. So if I toggle on and off, see it doesn't move anymore. So uh, now we can create our mask, and I think I'm going to do it with this one. Let's see. Uh, that one's even. That one's a little blown out. Let's go the bottom one here. There we go. That's our winner there. See how it's not so blown out? It's kind of very nicely exposed just on that area. Um, I like that. So let's create a mask. Um, get our brush. We zoom in a little bit so we can get this rocking. Uh, shrink the brush. We shall try eh, maybe 13% at first and see what happens. Uh, there we go. And the reason I'm kind of painting a little bit around the whole area is just to blend it in so that it's not so, uh, you know, so it doesn't leave some big circular spot right on his uh, chest area. So I'm just going to kind of paint just kind of around some of the blue area, just a little bit, just to kind of blend everything in. Just a little bit there. Maybe a little bit on his boot there. A little bit down here. There we go. Okay, cool. So, not bad at all. Very good. Like that a lot. Okay, so that fixed our problem there with his chest being a little too bright and kind of a distraction. You know, I think that before was kind of a distraction, taking everyone's attention from all the other cool stuff. So we shall leave that alone now and merge this together. I don't think I want to do anything else in here. Um, yeah, so might want to do one thing. So let's. Um, 
Obviously, I want to crop it, but let's um, make a duplicate of this in a minute. I'll show you what I'm gonna—a cool little trick that can work really well sometimes. So I just noticed this one thing. You can kind of see uh, there's this little um, sign here that you can tell probably says Gaston's Tavern, but you can only see the G A, and I don't like having that cut off. So I'm gonna kind of smush that in a little bit and maybe crop this down just a tad and this up just a tad that way that one you know the letters are kind of out of the way and that's kind of a distraction that's gone as well so yeah I think that looks a whole lot better so okay almost there so now I'm going to command J make a duplicate and I'm going to blur uh, the top layer um, the uh, Gaussian blur here and we'll blur it you can see it's blurring it pretty good so we'll blur it to maybe 23 percent we'll try that and then I play with the blending mode so normally I get a really cool uh, result with multiply and you can see it is really cool but you have to tone it down with the opacity and so if I leave the opacity here at maybe 30 uh, 36 and then I can erase I'm gonna hit E to get my eraser and I'm gonna erase maybe 69, 70 percent, whatever, to be rough, you know. Uh, I'm gonna erase some of that blur on the foreground so it's not so dark. It's kind of darkened it a little bit, but I like I like what it did to the sky. So I'm gonna leave the sky. Um, so all I'm doing is just basically er erasing, and you can see over here that I, I've just created, you know, an eraser tool that just took away most of the bottom of that blurred layer, and it's leaving the sky. And so I like that. That's that's uh, looking very good. So I'll shift select those again, Command E, merge them into one, and uh, pretty happy with that. That is a very nice photo. So I'm not going to do the the very final steps. That's just where I go into Lightroom and um, kind of do some uh, you know pre-export sharpening and noise reduction and all that fun stuff because that just takes forever. But I'll tell you what, I am changed my mind. I'm going to do a couple of more uh, little cleanup things that are just kind of bugging me. I'm gonna duplicate the layer again and go over here to uh, where am I at? there we go spot healing brush and I'm gonna start uh, getting rid of some of these little uh, spots and leaves and pieces of dirt on the ground and stuff uh, let's get rid of these little holes in the door as well just to kind of uh, take away any possible distractions of any kind uh, let's do that. And this spot healing brush in Photoshop CC works so much better than it did in CS6. It's like flawless. I have no clue. It's literally magic. Don't know how it works. But I'm pretty sure Gandalf was involved in some way, shape, or form. Um, let's take out some of this. These random blue spots here. Very good. Uh, okay. Take away whatever that is. Uh, let's see if we can get rid of this little... I don't know, door stoppers or something, maybe. Hmm. It's not doing quite the nice job. So let's I use a different tool whenever it doesn't quite get the job done. The clone stamp tool. So let's see if I can make something happen with that and make it look cool. Or uh real, I should say. Ah genius. Alright, so that's good. Um Good, and what I'm doing now is just kind of a final inspection for spots in the image, or maybe, you know, dust spots that were on my camera sensor here. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the spot tools. There's this little red dot here that I don't want. Uh, kind of a random star that I don't really want in the middle of the cloud. Uh, same here. Same here. Uh, I don't really like that, whatever the heck that is, sticking up there. Let's get rid of that. That's gone. Uh, okay. All right. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. I hope you guys um, enjoyed watching me go through my uh, post-processing um, on this Gaston's Tavern photo and uh, all the HDR merging stuff. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to ask me on um, my website, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, wherever. I would be more than happy to answer them uh, as soon as I possibly can. And I hope you guys had fun today, learned a little bit, uh, and I will catch you next time. Thanks so much for watching.